Hi everyone! I feel like it's a little bit early to talk about the holidays, but at the same time, if you're someone who knits and crochets and you want to make presents for your friends and family, then I think it's best to start now. I thought it would be cool to share some fun and creative ideas for not only presents for others, but also for yourself for the winter and holiday season. While I share these ideas with you, I'll be working on this scrap blanket that I really want to finish by the end of the year. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. I think one of the best gifts you can give someone is the gift of solidarity. I've been posting on my Instagram about Palestine, Sudan, and the Congo, but I haven't said anything on this channel. But right now, these places and so many others that are slipping right under our noses are going through incredibly horrible and traumatic times. So even through taking action like calling our representatives, protesting, and boycotting, I think using your art to show solidarity is an incredible act as well. If you want to make something out of solidarity for yourself or for others, you can start by making the general flag layout of any of these countries using either an already made graph or one you can design yourself with stitch fiddle in case you want to add any words or anything to it. These can be used as either tapestries for your home, blankets, or even at protests that are currently still going on. You can also create cute shawls or scarves with the country's colors on them. You can use the design of the kafia in solidarity by making tapestries again or even your own scarf to wear. A lot of the places to order a kafia is out of stock since the demand is really high right now, which is amazing, but in case you wanted to wear one to a protest or in your everyday life in solidarity, you can create a little crochet bandana or neck scarf with the design until you're able to purchase this one to help Palestinian businesses. For more subtle approaches or smaller projects, you can make little bracelets with the flag colors, cute keychains, or even bookmarks to use for yourself or put in every book at the bookstore. You can make cute watermelon plushies or even make little tapestries or tote bags with these Hello Kitty designs. You just need to put them into a grid pattern or redraw them on a graph so you can accurately crochet or knit them. You can make small pins by crocheting a tiny flag and then adding a safety pin in the back so you can put them on your jackets or your bags. I also linked a site down below with the embroidery patterns from Palestinian Embroidery, also known as Tatris, but they can be used for knit and crochet as well. The next type of projects you can make, whether it be for yourself or as presents, are sweaters and cardigans. This is the perfect season for unlimited sweater projects, and there's an incredible amount of ways you can make them. Right now, I'm obsessed with cable knit sweaters, especially after learning how to knit them, and so I'm definitely going to recommend those. They're fun to learn, and once you get the hang of it, you can create your own fun patterns and unique designs with the cables like I'm doing. You can make a crochet zip up or puffer jacket, and I heard it's pretty simple to add zippers to crochet, so I might actually try that this season. Here is a coat from Miu Miu that's all crocheted, and I feel like this could be a fun project to do instead of paying over $2,000 to get it. You can make fun fuzzy crochet or knit sweaters, which seems like it'll be hard to do, but if you're experienced with how the stitches feel in your hand while you crochet or knit, then I know you can definitely just take a basic sweater pattern and use fuzzy yarn instead of non-fuzzy yarn and make a cute winter themed sweater. This jacket here is so cute, and how awesome would it be to be able to make this just with a crochet hook? For both knit and crochet, you can make fun sweaters with graphs on them, whether it's holiday themed sweaters or sweaters with seasonal graphs like snowflakes, deers, or even cute fair isle sweaters with winter colors. Chunky sweaters are one of the best because they'll look and feel incredibly cozy and keep you warm during the cold winter nights ice skating or buying hot chocolate from your locally owned coffee shops. I saw this photo and thought it was a funny type of cute, and then I thought it would actually be really cool to make a sweater dress. All it is is just knitting and crocheting until the panels go down to your ankles, which will take some time, but I think it'll come out cute. If you prefer more plain sweaters, then solid color wool and ribbed sweaters would be beautiful as well. For tops, I didn't think too much since you're most likely going to be wearing a sweater, jacket, or coat over it, but still, if you're indoors or if the sweater isn't incredibly cold out, you can create festive vests with holiday appliques and designs, and you can make cute shrugs with bows and pastel colors or slip on long sleeve tie tops. This cute fuzzy cami top would be really cute too. 
For bottoms, you can make these really cute mini skirts and then just layer them over some heat tech or fleece tights. You can make these bloomers that is currently on my project to-do list because they're the cutest to me. Maxi skirts, whether one or multi-layered, knit or crocheted, is also great, especially the long maxi ones since they're a bit more insulating, but of course you should still wear tights underneath to stay warm. You can knit and crochet fun pants with funky patterns or with super chunky yarn, especially if you like the oversized pants look. I think these are so cute and I want to make them so bad. I just need to learn how to do the bubble stitch and I have a feeling that I might be able to do it. For simpler pants, you can do a basic ribbed pant and that can be worn either as pajamas or as a cozy going out piece. A basic stockinette pant is a perfect idea as well. Matching sets for the winter is really cute to me, so maybe making a ribbed set like this or adding cable stitches in the mix would be really cute. A cute little fuzzy set like this using faux fur yarn or teddy bear yarn or even a full mohair set like this, although it might be a bit itchy. So if you did make something like this, I'd say definitely wear layers underneath and you should be good. You can even go full on knit onesie like this one. The easiest types of projects are accessories and I have a ton of fun ideas for them. Starting with the typical winter accessory, you can make all types of scarves. You can make basic ones, you can make ribbed ones, you can make ones with cables in them, you can make scarves with fun graphics from pieces of media you love like Studio Ghibli or Sherlock Holmes, you can make ones with graphs that represent the winter or just graphs you enjoy in general. You can make scrap scarves to make them really unique and one of a kind, you can make finger scars, you can make the Linny Kravitz scarf. <laughs> There's literally no end to the different types of scarves you can make, and they don't just have to be neck scarves. You can make head scarves, or even better, beanies with really long flaps that can act like a scarf. If you're not a fan of scarves, but still want to keep your neck warm, then make some balaclavas. You can make plain solid color ones, you can do granny square balaclavas, you can make a snood, and to make them really unique, you can add bunny ears, horns, or even make a balaclava that looks like a literal sculpture on your head. You have so much room for creativity with these and there's tons of inspiration out there for you to get motivated from. Still staying in the headwear space, you can make these incredibly cute bonnets and ear warmers. For the ear warmers, you can create earmuffs or plain headbands that can press against your ears. You can make the ones that tie under your head or even beanies that tie under as well. You can even make warm ear covers for your headphones so you can listen to music and keep your ears warm at the same time. For the bonnets, you can make solid color hoods, fuzzy brushed ones, ones shaped like cute animals, even ones with fluffy yarn and ruffles. This one with Hello Kitty is so cute you guys and the cherry tie at the bottom is the cherry on top. <laughs> okay sorry I had to do it okay. This clown one is really cute and the one Irene wore in Chill Kill is so delicate and pretty as well. A no-brainer would be to make leg and hand warmers of course. There's an endless possibility for leg warmers, and I even have a guide for leg warmers on my channel if you're interested. For hand warmers, you can do solid color ones, granny square hand warmers, ones with appliques on top, anything you can imagine. Making socks is on my to-do list of learning, so I thought adding socks to the idea list would be perfect. You can knit and crochet socks, though I've heard knit socks are better for durability. Do correct me if I'm wrong. I definitely want to learn how to do funky socks with fun little graphs on them, so those are fun ideas to keep in mind if you're interested in making socks for yourself or others. Of course, beanies is an option for the winter time. I think knit and crochet beanies are a staple in any winter wardrobe, whether they're chunky or thin. It's always important to keep your head toasty warm and it's fun to have some creativity on them in the process. I thought these bags were incredibly cute and would be perfect for the winter season. Adding any type of graph to a tote or a purse would be a cute gift for someone or even this fuzzy purse too. This is probably my favorite from the list since it looks so simple to make but it is incredibly pretty and delicate and the ribbons add a beautiful layer to the bag as well. Other fun accessories to make would be cozies for your hot drinks or teapots, hair ties made with delicate yarn like mohair or a fluffy yarn, really cute neckties to add layering to your outfits, or cozy crocheted slippers. For your pets, you can make literally anything I mentioned earlier, but just in a smaller size. Like you can do holiday sweaters, cable knit sweaters, sweaters with graphs on them, or just your basic knit and crocheted sweater as well. If your pet likes hats, which unfortunately mine doesn't, you can make cute snoods or holiday hats to keep them warm, or even short scarves or collars so they can look cute but also not trip on them. 
To decorate your home for the holidays, you can make these cute cable knit pillow covers, cute snowflake ornaments, or tree skirts if you celebrate Christmas. You can make cute gingerbread or peppermint pillows or even peppermint coasters. I made these and they came out incredibly cute so I would definitely recommend them to you. Also another idea I thought would be really cool was doing a crochet gingerbread house. These can last all throughout the years and in case you're someone who likes to make gingerbread houses but not eat them then this could possibly be ideal for you to avoid just throwing the houses away when you're done. You can crochet snowflakes and create your own garland for anywhere you want to decorate. Same with these trees and pine cones. Like you can take these pine cones, spray them with perfume, and then put them into a decorative bowl or something and that would be cute. You can also make fun blankets whether they're holiday themed or winter themed. Making blankets with intricate patterns take time, but it'll be incredibly worth it, especially for someone who you know would appreciate it. For decoration for the gifts that you're going to give to others, you can make little cake boxes for whatever gifts you get them so they can have a unique box to open and keep for other purposes instead of just throwing it out. You can also make your own keychains and tags to put on the box like these photo card covers and instead of the photo, you can have a tag with their name on it. Or for another idea, you can make the same covers and put a photo of you and whoever you're gifting it to inside to make it a personalized gift for them. As another gift holder, you can make these cute pouches to place gifts in and if you want, you can line them with fabric to keep the crochet or knit intact. You can make your own bows for the gifts to tie around them and then ask for them back to use next year or let them keep it as a hair accessory or something. You can even crochet book covers if you're gifting someone a book so they won't know what book is inside. I think these are just some fun little ideas to spice up gift wrapping and make it less wasteful. And it's also appreciated a lot more since it was made from your hands with love and probably weeks of work. I hope you all enjoyed all of these ideas. Like I said earlier, all of them and more are linked in my Pinterest in the description box below. I hope everyone has a safe, healthy, and warm winter and holiday season. I hope we can all continue to work towards humanity and not spread hate even though a lot of that is going around right now. And I want to clarify that no one is free until everyone is free. I'll see you in the next video.